Simply put, Prince of Persia is one of the most groundbreaking series in video gaming. Throughout a multitude of titles, it has managed to push story, music, visuals, voice acting, characterization, and gameplay into some really interesting directions, as well as some places that are maybe not as interesting. Kill him. Anyway, it's been one of my favorite franchises over the years, and I've been wanting to delve deep into these sands for a long, long time. So without further ado, I proudly present... Prince of Persia was released in 1989 on pretty much every home computer in existence and eventually to a slew of consoles in the subsequent years. Published by Broderbund and designed single-handedly by Jordan Mechner, I can't count how many times I booted up the original Pop during free time in the computer labs at school when I should have been learning or whatever. It casts this magic spell over me with its mix of graphics, animation, and sound that kept bringing me back time and time again. For those that are not familiar, Prince of Persia tasks you with beating the game in 60 minutes, as that is how much time the evil wizard Jafar has given the uh, princess of Persia to choose between two possible fates, to either wed this gross old wizard or death. Unbeknownst to the princess, Jafar has thrown her main squeeze, some guy, into the dungeons rather than, you know, kill him. All the while, the sultan is off on a crusade out of town somewhere. So you'll need to jump, stab, hang, run, jump, stab, stab, and jump through all, all 12 insidious levels before that hourglass empties. Now, it's very unlikely you'll be able to achieve this feat the first time, because Prince of Persia wasn't really designed to be completed in one perfect run the first time you play. Since your time limit is so nail-bitingly strict, you need to go through the game again and again, finding the fastest route and circumventing the enemies and obstacles in your way with razor-sharp efficiency. This is easier said than done, as it can be quite stressful since there's 12 levels, so you'll need to maximize your time and make sure you don't fuck around too hard on any particular one. Spend two more extra minutes fighting on level 3? Then you better find a way to make up for that lost time in the next couple of areas. Using quick reflexes and acrobatic skill, and after besting a whole army of guards, the aforementioned skeletons, and even a dark mirror image of the prince himself, it all comes down to facing off against Jafar one on one. While not the most epic of fights, it still leads to a satisfying conclusion where the prince and princess are reunited as they stand over the bloody corpse of an old man. Prince of Persia still stands as an absolute PC classic. When I think of retro PC gaming, it's usually the first or second thing to spring to mind. Back in 1989, the fluid level of animation done via rotoscoping was staggering to see, and lots of other games were influenced by its look, with such notable names as Another World, Flashback, and many others. This pretty much spurred the subgenre known as the cinematic platformer that, while it isn't really a descriptor used today, you can still see the roots of it in games like Limbo, Inside, or even Cannabalt. Like I mentioned before, Prince of Persia was ported to almost everything, as it was a massive success on computers, therefore it made appearances on Super Nintendo, the Genesis, the Game Gear, the 32X, the fucking Master System, just it, everything. For the sake of brevity, however, let's focus on the Super Nintendo and Jenny ports. 
the Genesis version is more or less a straightforward port of the original with updated graphics, teeming with way more detail, and using the Prince design from Prince of Persia 2, Shadow and the Flame, as both were released in the same year. It's a good port, but it doesn't house any real surprises. The Super Nintendo version, on the other hand, has extended cutscenes and story, and completely remade levels with different layouts, and has an extended 120 minute time limit to compensate for the fact that it's much harder than the 1989 original. While every port has minute differences between them that are interesting in their own right, I have to give a special shout out to the Sega CD version, which uh, decided to take a, a different approach to the story. I did it! My brave hero. Princess! Now, before we leave the original game behind, there is one more version I'd like to talk about, and that's Prince of Persia Classic, the remake Ubisoft released back in 2007 on the 360 and the PS3. Still building off the base of the original 12 levels and their layouts, it swaps out everything to fit the world and characters of Sands of Time, so the prince is the Yuri Lowenthal version, Farah taking the role of the princess, and the evil vizier playing the evil Jafar. The overall game is much easier than the original, with expanded combat options and a few new acrobatic maneuvers, but the final battle has been expanded a little bit, which is nice. While I think it's a solid remake, the graphics just lack the charm of Jordan Mechner's sprites and the Sands of Time aesthetic feels really shoehorned in, as even the same sound effects are just reused like traps and the clanging of swordplay. While a little cheap feeling, it's still a respectable interpretation of the classic and is worth a download. The full development time of the original pop game has been estimated by Mechner at around 4 years, and while its sequel didn't take him as long to develop, it wasn't for another 4 years until Prince of Persia 2, The Shadow and the Flame was released on home computers in 1993, with various ports coming out for a while afterwards. Featuring expanded gorgeous graphics, cinematics, voiceovers, new traps and enemies, and with even more of an emphasis on fantasy, combat, and puzzles, Shadow and the Flame is a more bombastic sequel in every way, but it does feel a little bit clunkier and it lacks some of the platforming finesse of its predecessor. Now, despite being killed in the first game fa fairly definitively, Jafar returns with no explanation twists his mustache in a devious way and impersonates the prince via Ginyu-esque body swapping, forcing him to fugitive his way out of the situation. The game kicks off with an amazing sequence where he crashes through the palace window and makes a daring rooftop escape, jumping and stabbing his way down to the marketplace. Pop 2 has lots of memorable little moments, and this is definitely one of them, with more guards barreling down on you once you reach said marketplace, a clutch running jump onto the bow of a leaving ship carries the prince away from his pursuers and deep into parts unknown. This is the moment where the prince goes on an incredible acid-infused vision quest where he is teleported, rides magic carpets, gallops upon mystical bronze steeds, and all manner of supernatural bullshit. Between almost every completed level, we are met with strange visions of a mysterious woman who claims the prince is her son. Before that is even fully explained, however, he is already on his way back to Persia, where he encounters the imposter Jafar, who manages to use some type of stand to draw the prince into a spirit dimension for their final fight. It's, it's pretty crazy. The game ends on an odd note where we can see a gross witch watching a twitch stream of the prince and princess making out on a flying horse via a crystal ball. Not only is this scene weird, it was never followed up upon as Jordan Mechner planned for it to be part of the storyline for A Prince of Persia 3, which he never wound up making. He did want to take a break from video games and pursue a career in movies, which unfortunately didn't yield too much fruit for him, at least for a while. 
While there were just as many ports for Prince of Persia 2, the Super Nintendo version oddly lacking the final level and boss fight, a more recent version of the game came out back in 2013 by the Renaissance masters of game design, Gameloft. Shadow and the Flame for mobile devices is a very, very different take on the source material. The story sequences play out in a different order, and some levels literally throw you right in the middle of the action, with scrolling text filling you in on events after you've already completed them. Gone is a smooth animation from the original. What animation is here is really kind of stiff and not especially good looking. We are now also approaching Prince of Edge territory, as our hero closely resembles his warrior within look, and I guess Ubisoft didn't want to pay Yuri Lowenthal for the 6th or 7th time, as there's just no voices to be heard in this version at all. Cheap sound effects and repetitive music is what passes for the auditory landscape here, but none of our senses are treated as badly as touch, because controlling the prince on a touchscreen device is like having your fingernails peeled off. Nothing feels responsive, and it's just really clunky and unintuitive to play. Fortunately, if you have a compatible mobile controller, that does help alleviate some of the frustration. However, if you want a completely different set of frustrations, then get prepared for mini buys, as Shadow in the Flame sports several packs of goodies you can buy with real money, such as additional potions, buffs, and combos. Yes, even though the combat is pretty brain dead, you can up the prince's repertoire with such secret moves as Tiger Thrust and Viper Strike. While I appreciate adding a few new things to the game rather than just doing a basic carbon copy remake, it just feels like a hollow, sloppy cash grab from Ubisoft, and I can't honestly recommend it. Now, as I mentioned before, Prince of Persia creator Jordan Mechner took a break from game development after he completed Shadow and the Flame, but the series would go on without him regardless. While the enigmatic prince had taken on his fair share of guards, illusions, wizards, and all manners of lethal death traps, he had yet to tackle the most dangerous obstacle of all. The Third Dimension. You might remember the unmemorable Prince of Persia 3D, and the franchise's first bungling steps into a foreign 3D world, but that's a tale you'll hear next time on...